lift our hands all over this place and just begin to love the Lord for the moment. Oh God, Lord, as we yearn, Lord, as we hunger and we desire you, Lord Jesus. We are here because of your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Drawing us into yourself, Lord. Drawing us into you. That precious blood of the spotless lamb would be applied, O oh God. Lord, in your name, in your name, in your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Praise God. Why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise this evening? name of Jesus, you may be seated. Such a wonderful, overwhelming presence of God that is in this place. I, I do not want to, to belabor any point. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. And uh, last time I was here in the absence of uh, Pastor Whittington, they were watching via the internet. So if they're watching tonight, I just want to tell them how much I love them and appreciate them. And I'm very honored to be here. I wish that they were here. And uh, I know they're having a great time um, together right now. And it's just good to be here with you all and to know that God is in this place. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that we're on the same page there. If God, we're not here. I would not want to to waste my time and, and be where he is not. I need him. We need him. We need him. Um, I, was, I was listening to the news just a little bit ago and at 6.30 this evening, they uh, did something that they had not done in, in many years. They, the Arkansas Travelers baseball team, they they switched some things up. They relabeled the team. And I, as I was listening to the news and as uh, the owner of the team began to, to talk about why they had decided to go this route and, and, and change everything up and, and go another direction, they, they wanted to revolutionize not only the team, but how, how the city saw the team. And I, I began to think about some things in my life, and I, tonight I just would like God to revolutionize some things in me. Revamp me. Rebrand me. I think I could use a little bit of that. I think we all could possibly, in some areas of our life, use a little bit of rebranding, repromoting, redirectioning. 
I, I could use a word in my life tonight. I, I could use a few things from his presence in my life tonight. And with that said, I'd like to take your attention to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Take our focus uh, tonight's message from Genesis chapter 3 and Genesis chapter 4. Beginning at verse 17 in the third book of Genesis. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. And in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. And in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. And till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. In verse 23, the Lord says, Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Genesis chapter 4, beginning in verse 2. And she again bare another, his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flocks and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had, had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth, and why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shalt thou his desire, and shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass that when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. I want to speak to you tonight from this subject, to you and myself also from this subject, lost in a familiar place. Lost in a familiar place. One more time, can we close our eyes at the our hearts and our voices to the Lord Jesus? We love you and we thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your spirit, God. We ask that you would begin to speak to us tonight from the Word, from the throne room of heaven. Hide me behind the cross, underneath the blood. Lord, I don't want to be seen, but Lord, I do want your Word to be heard as you would touch our hearts, as you would touch our lives, as you would touch our minds, as you would speak to us, Lord, that you would strengthen us, uphold us with your right hand, God. Heal us, touch our lives in ways, Lord, that we need your Spirit to do tonight. Lord God, we ask that you would forgive and wash us of our sins, Lord. Bring conviction in this place. Let your Spirit begin to bring hope and life in this place that you would make of our lives a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service as you have decided and you have declared for us in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray one more time why don't we just clap our hands unto the Lord all over this house Jesus Jesus Jesus, Jesus. Cain's offering was rejected by God the thought of not being accepted by him was more overwhelming than his heart was able to contain. The, the grief, the agony, the hurt. As you know, he, he had worked so hard to give God his best of everything that he had done. Everything that he had worked so hard for. It was his blood 
It was his sweat. It was his tears. It was his pain. It was the labor from his body that he had worked and he had tilled so hard for to bring God this beautiful and bountiful offering of herbs, of vegetables, fruits. But it was not what God had asked him for. It was not what God had desired of him. It was what he had not required of at all. God didn't ask that man would bring him what he thought best. He didn't ask him to bring him what he wanted to give him. He didn't ask for what he had strove over and what his talents and his abilities were in. He had asked him to give of a sacrifice, something that had life, something that had potential, had to die. Cain was an overcomer from the very beginning because when his father and his mother had, had fallen in the garden, the curse that, that was to come when the Lord told him of every tree in the garden you can eat, but of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat for, and the day that you eat thereof you shall surely die. The, the word was set. The, the word was put into motion that the day that you eat, you are going to die. And, and when the day came, when Eve was, was tricked by the serpent and she was, she was coerced into looking in that tree and eating of that tree and she gave of Adam of what she had taken in, knowing that she had done wrong, he told her, you've done something foolish. You've, you've done something that was not right, but yet because she had eaten, he desired to eat of it with her. When their eyes were open and they realized that they were naked and then yet they were to hide themselves, God would come in and he would ask Adam where he was and as Adam was hiding himself, God would ask Adam a very simple question. Why have you done this? Adam, in his response, he didn't, he didn't take the responsibility on to himself. He says, she, my, my wife, the, the one that you have made for me, she had eaten it and she gave it to me. And so God goes to the woman and he says, why did you do this? Knowing what I have said, knowing, knowing the parameters that I've made, why did you do this? She said, well, the serpent, the serpent, he just, he was so cunning. So the Lord comes to the serpent. To the serpent, he, he begins to utter words of, 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 of utter condemnation. You're, you're not going to walk upright, but you are going to slither on your belly for the rest of your days. And he, he condemned the serpent to, to slither, and, and that's what he did. And then all of a sudden, he begins to come to the woman, and he said, Beyond the serpent and the woman, see, there's going to be enmity between you two. Then he looks at Adam. He said, your days are not going to be so easy. But the ground that you came out of, you're going to have to work it. You're going to sweat over it. It's going to break you. It's going to hurt you. It's going to be a feat that you will never really be able to overcome because it will be a constant struggle for you to bring life out of the ground for which I brought life out of for you. You're going to have to sweat over it. It's going to, to be something in your life that's going to be a dread every single day. You are going to be a tiller of the ground. And you're going to have to fight the thistle. And you will fight the thorns. From the day that Cain was born, he, he had to work as an overcomer. It says that of everything that he had done, that his brother Abel, the younger of the two, he, he watched the livestock, he, he watched the cattle, he, he watched all of these things. But Cain 
was a tiller of the ground. And so it is here in Genesis, the fourth chapter, that he comes bearing his, his precious crop that he has worked so hard over. Everything that he had put his attention to, every, everything that he had put his energy into, everything that he had worked so diligently over, he was bringing it to God. Abel, brought of the firstlings of the flock, but Cain brought a sacrifice of the ground. And the Lord had no desire in it whatsoever. There was no blood. There was no sacrifice. So there was no forgiveness. And then it was no good. After all, the Bible says it was after a process of time that they were to come in and worship. Time was established in Genesis, the first chapter, in the 14th verse, when it said, And God said, Let there be lights to the firmament of the heaven to divide the day and the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Time was not established for God because God controls all time. He is not bound by time. Time is bound in Him. It is in Him that we live and move and have our being. Time is not for God. Time is for us. So that we should know what time that it is. So that we should be aware of the hours of what is coming and what is passing. What we have let slip from our hands and what we must grab a hold of. Time is not for God. Time is for us. And it was through a process of time that Cain was to come and to worship. He had time to get everything straight. He had time to get everything in order. He had time to find the sacrifice that God would see fit for him. But in his process of time, he chose to focus on his field. You see, since they were children, they were raised understanding one thing, that sacrifice requires blood. It wasn't the first time for Cain to come before God and offer up a sacrifice. He had been doing it since he was a child. He didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, let's go to church. No, it was something that he had done since he was a child. It was a process. It was something that he was instilled for him because the time that God moved upon his family, his mother and his father, worship and sacrifice was instituted into the picture. Something has to die in order for you to live. Hebrew says, for without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. This is what God had done in order to clothe Adam and Eve. Something innocent had to die. He didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, I want to sing a song of praise. He didn't just wake up one day and say, hey, I got to go to church. No, it was something that was familiar, but in a familiar place of worship. He was lost. Struggling in himself struggling by what he was proud of and not willing to give God what was asked of him. Struggling because he had put his sweat, his blood, and his tears into something that he loved, but obviously he loved it more than he loved the God that was able to forgive him. There was something, something wrong on the inside because he was lost in a familiar place. Being rejected wasn't the worst thing that was to happen. The worst thing was still yet to come. Even though his, his offering and his sacrifice wasn't accepted, the Lord speaks to him and he said, if you knew to do good, don't you know that you would be accepted? Be careful, Cain. Be careful because you have not given what needs to be given. Sin lies at the door. Because you have not let the things die that need to die. You are in a familiar place. Sin lies at the door. And it will have rule over you if you're not careful. It will break you if you're not careful. But he was lost in a familiar place. We come every Wednesday. We come every Sunday. But yet so many times we 
we are lost even in the pew that we sit. Because we're proud of what we've done. We're proud of what we've accomplished. But why didn't he have any sheep in his own field? If he knew that one day he was going to have to worship, why did he not have his own rams? Why did he have not his own firstlings? Why did he not have his own oxen? Why didn't he have his own lambs? If he knew that one day he was going to have to give something to God, but yet he planted what he wanted to plant. Abel watched the sheep. But where was Cain's? So he goes to the field. And he sees the first sin and says, thing. His brother. Innocent because Abel's sacrifice had been accepted. Innocent because Abel's sacrifice had the blood applied to it. Abel was innocent because the blood had pushed away his trespasses and his wrongdoings. And so as Cain comes into the field, the first innocent thing that he sees is Abel. The firstling of what God had done. Fresh. Pure. Pure. The Bible said that he met with Abel in the field. Abel greets him in the field knowing where he was. Abel's mind wasn't wondering. His sacrifice had been accepted. It had been fulfilled for its purpose, but Cain was still lost in a familiar place, looking at his innocent brother and watching all of the sheep graze. He had his choice of sacrifice. He he had his choice of what was right. He had his choice of picking. And all he knew is he had an open door opportunity to go back before the altar of worship and lay a sacrifice and receive what he needed. But rather than choose wisely, rage began to rise up within him. Somehow the grief of being rejected Searching for the sacrifices of Yoke, yet the sacrifice had just seemed different for him because now he was struggling in himself because he was lost in a familiar place. Remembering what it had been like, but now embracing what it was like, he was lost. Guilt started to rise up, and now rage was beginning to overwhelm him, and his posterity began to change rather than his countenance. And all of a sudden, rather than embrace what needed to be embraced, the next thing he knows, he's looking down at his blood covered hands, and his brother's lifeless body is laying before his feet. You thought rejection was bad. The pain and the guilt of living with what you have done to someone else is what will last forever. You see, his moment has it passed when Abel would be killed before him. You thought reject being rejected by God was awful. The next thing that would happen was God would come to Ain and he'd say, Where is your brother? And he would respond, Do I am I supposed to keep watch over him? And am I supposed to know where he is every single day? Is he my priority? And all of a sudden, God would begin to come to Cain. He said, What have you done? Because your brother's blood cries from the ground. And all of a sudden now the curse begins to be laid upon Cain. You see, for what he had done to Abel, Cain would be marked. What he had done to his innocent brother would be something that he would never be able to live past. Because no one would ever be able to take him from this world and let his mind be eased of the guilt and the grief of which he had committed. No one was going to be able to kill him because God marked him. No one was ever going to be able to ease the nightmare that he would live through because God had marked him. No one was ever going to be able to take him out of this world because he had to live with the guilt of what he had done. And you thought being rejected was bad. I used to think... That being hurt was the worst pain possible that you could possibly endure. I used to think that someone breaking your heart would be something that you would never be able to get over. But try being the one that has inflicted the pain. 
Jesus said, for what you have done to them, you have done also to me. Paul writes in Corinthians, woe unto you, that would be a stumbling block to your brethren. Jesus would say, if you would offend any of them, it would be better that a millstone would be thrown around your neck and you would be cast into the middle of the sea because you think being rejected by God is bad. Try being the one that hurts someone else. And so many times we are lost in familiar places not realizing that we are opening doors of hurt to other people. It wasn't blind rage. It was, this, it was the inability to realize and examine himself and to acknowledge that he needed something more from God. We so many times we think that we're okay because just because we're here, but we need something more from God. We think that we're okay because we make it on a Sunday morning or a Sunday night or because we get the chance to preach maybe every now and again, but we need something more from God. He lost his sense of purpose. His lack of self-examination, his meaning was gone because he was lost in a familiar place. They would ask of Jesus, would you show us the Father? And he would respond, have I been so long with you that you don't even know the answer to that question that you asked? Nathaniel knew that it was Jesus just by the fact that in the book of John when he said when you were under the tree praying I saw you and by that that's all it took for him to follow everything that he had done. He did it for a sign. He did it for a reason. He did it for a purpose. But had he been so long with them that they got so familiar with where they are that they were lost even in the presence of Jesus. Just because you can feel him just because you can move him and just because you can be moved by him, we still get it wrong because we lost, are lost in a familiar place. Because there is more from us that is required. There is more from us that is required. He requires something to die. There's a song that we used to sing that says, And if my sacrifice is less than giving you my very best, help me remember Calvary's cross and be willing to say yes. I don't preach this tonight just because my heart is heavy. And maybe not only because I am guilty, maybe because there are things that in the past process of the past six months of my life, Maybe I lost my sense of purpose. I lost my, my sense of self-examination. Because so many times we ask God why, but we never ask why not. When James would begin to write, count it all joy when you enter into diverse temptations. Why not? But all we're doing is question why. Why the hurt? Why the pain? Why the loss? Why subjected to this? Why? Why not? If all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose, why not endure just a little bit of, of, of hurt just every now and then? Why not go through a little bit of pain and hell every now and then? Why not understand what it's like to hurt? Why not understand what it's like to cry? Why not? Because if He's working on me, because if I have not been given what needs to be given, if I have not let anything die that needs to die, why not? Now, the last six months of my life it has been a living nightmare. But I can also say in the last six months, those that were there closest to me trying to help me get through were the first ones to get hurt. 
And I thought being rejected was bad. I don't want to be like Cain. And I don't want to be lost in a familiar place. I don't want to know what it's like to come to the house of God and lift up my hands and be rejected because what I am giving of him, he does not want from me. But I want to give him what is asked. I want to give him what is required because I want to be what he wants me to be. Because if he called me, I want to be what he called me. I don't want to be what everybody thought I was. I want to be what he made me to be. I've failed. I've hurt. But I've also inflicted. I am guilty. And my hands are bound and my heart is chained. And the only one that can release me is the only one that can accept the sacrifice by which I can come giving myself and telling him that I'm sorry that I didn't do it right the last time. I'm sorry I didn't do it right the first time. I'm sorry I didn't give everything that needed to be given. I'm sorry I didn't put it down on the altar and I still carried the weight and the sin that easily beset me. I'm sorry I did not give a whole sacrifice, but I gave it of my wants and I gave it of my own desire. It was his field. He was proud of what he had done. God had said it was going to be hard, but look what he had done with it. He made it grow. He gave it life. He gave it fruit. He gave it abundance. And that's what we're so proud of is what we have done with what God has given us. But is it exactly what God has required? Judas had been with him. He had talked to him. He had spent time with him. But even in his presence, he was lost. The same goes with Peter and the rest of the disciples. The time that they had spent was not enough because what they had given, they had only given because it was seemingly required and not exactly what God had wanted out of them. They had followed him because of his good works. They, they had followed him because he was promising a kingdom, but where was their heart? He said, you love me with your mouths, but your hearts are far, far from me. We're so familiar the beautiful presence of God that we feel here. Brother Michael, they, he comes and he, he, he goes to prayer. He gets a mind for God for the songs. And they, they leave worship and they sing. and sing so beautifully. They, they got the specials and the, the music and the musicians are so should not lost in a familiar place. Knowing we should say we're sorry, we don't. Because we're just wondering in a familiar place. He would live with the regret of what would come next. Because he was never willing to change until he realized that the burden of what would be laid upon him would be too much for him to even bear. Only then, and in that moment, was he realizing, I had really done something wrong. Only until the weight of the sin had been laid upon him did he realize, I can't live my life like this anymore. But it was too late. He couldn't go in and he couldn't change it. His brother was gone. And he would have to live with the pain that he inflicted on somebody else. Oh, 
been struggling with this thought for a couple of weeks, and I know that it is not well laid out. Notes aren't exactly aligned to where they could be or should be. But he was a keeper of the field. Obviously, he was good at it. The Bible says in Matthew, the 13th chapter, the musicians want to come, that there was a precious field and it had a, it had a great treasure inside of the field and a man that wanted the treasure. He went and he bought the field just so that he could have the treasure. That's great. He got what he wanted. He got the treasure. He got the valuable thing that he wanted and he desired. But what do you do with the field once you get the treasure? Do you let it go to waste? Do you just let it grow up and, and get consumed with the thistle and with the weeds and, and with the briars and with the thorns? Do you just let it get overrun and, and let people walk by and they, and they look at it and they see how ugly the field can really be? But you got the treasure. You got what you wanted out of it. But why else would you have to keep the field? You got forgiveness. So why do you have to keep your life in order? You got filled with the Holy Ghost and you felt the precious Spirit of God move upon you and come out of you like a, a river of living water. But why give the rest to God? Just because you got the treasure, do you have to keep the field? His ability to keep the field was a talent. And we give our talents to God. But it requires more out of us than our talents. It requires more out of us than a song of praise and worship. It requires more out of us than just studying for a good message. lost in a place that he had been before. Struggling in a place that he had visited time and time and time again. Going to the altar, holding the hand of his father. Now okay, Cain, this is what we do. The innocent lamb. I know, I know that you've watered it. I know that you've petted it. And I know that you have cared for it. This is what you do. Because this is what God requires. When did he realize? Think one day, you know what? Well, I'll take a lamb. That's not what I worked for. That's not what I give my time to. That's not what I struggle after. I'll just give him the fruit of the land of my labor. But it was a familiar place because he was lost.
my heart preaching my conviction but I believe it's not just me I, I believe we all have a sense at times to struggle you sometimes you come to church and we just feel like we're just going through the motions it's the same day in and day out you know God has something for you you feel like you're rejection you've been rejected you you feel like needs to go and you're in a familiar place and it feels like you've never even been here before Israel had wandered 40 years in a, in a wilderness that, that would have taken them two weeks to get through and I wonder how many times they came to the same place and the same holes were there where their tents had been three weeks ago it's familiar when did it not click that they were lost? When did, it, when did it not hit them that they weren't trusting and they weren't doing what they should have been doing? And they were seeing the same holes. You know where I put my tent last time? That rock, it looks so familiar. And that the bush that I, that I fell where I found that serpent that last time when, when it bit me and I had to go to Moses, the serpent, isn't that the same tree that I fell out? I broke my arm and they had to take me to the priest and allow him pray. Oh, when did it finally click that they were lost in the familiar place? Until the last person of a generation died. Joshua could stand at the banks of the River Jordan. It's time to go to a new place. It's time to be rebranded. Choose you this day who you will serve, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's time to give what needs to be given. Why don't we just stand to our feet and begin to lift our hands? It's all over this house. And just not, not just more focus on anybody else, but find a place. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus, an altar is of your own.
Jesus is all I need. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all.